Raw report, everybody. A lot happened on Raw. Thought the show was pretty good overall. So let's get right into it here. It opened up. Seth Rollins coming down to the ring. Actually, this was a poor start. I hate this character passionately. Comes down. He's in his stupid outfit. He's laughing. The fans sing his song, which, by the way, this song sucks. I don't know why they sing it. But uh, finally, he gets talking, and he decides that he wants some gold. He wants some championship gold. He's not going to give a rematch to, to uh, Matt Riddle. So Riddle, of course, hits the ring. We have a big brawl. It's all broken up, and uh, they kind of split everybody up, and Riddle's still in the ring, and out comes the Judgment Day. And so they want Riddle in the Judgment Day. But, of course, he says no, and uh, we get another brawl, and this leads to Finn Balor, Matt Riddle. 14 minutes. Very good match. And uh, you got Finn Balor and Matt Riddle. What do you expect, dude? And uh, they had a good match. And then uh, uh, the Judgment Day tried to interfere. Rey Mysterio ran in. Riddle got a bunch of near falls, draping DDT. And finally, we had another distraction, this time by Seth Rollins. Distracts Riddle. And uh, Balor hit the inverted DDT, coup de gras, pinned him, and then gave him the stomp after the match. So uh, you know that Rollins and Riddle are going to have a match, but they're doing the slow build to who, what, when, where, and why. And we'll find out more later. We had a interview uh, with Io Sky and Dakota Kai about the Tag Team Championship match tonight. Uh, Dominic Mysterio did a promo. And uh, time, Mike, is a flat... You told me it was a flat circle. Yes. I asked if time was a circle. You said it was a flat circle. Yes. And I know that's what they say, but, like, what do you mean a flat circle? As opposed to a square circle, a round circle, an inflated circle? It's a circle, bro. Squared circle. So we're back here to uh, 1993. When Lex Luger was on the Lex Express, and he was on his way to facing Yokozuna at SummerSlam 93, and they did the goofiest interview segment where you saw him facing one way, and then it faded to see him facing the other way. And I, I laughed and I ridiculed how goofy that was. And now here we are. They shot it the exact same way for old Dominic. It was like he was getting his kindergarten pictures taken. Where he go like this, and then they got the other shot of you looking up like this in the background to see your profile or whatever. He actually did a decent interview, and he explained that uh, you're a little guy, Dad, but you cast a big shadow, and I am no longer in your shadow. He actually said he was no longer under his shadow, so I'm not sure Dominic knows what a shadow is. But anyway, he's no longer under his shadow. It's a Hanalei quote in 2030. Basically. And uh, no, what are you talking about? And then Rhea Ripley whispered in his ear, and Dominic says, I'm not your baby boy anymore. I'm a man. He's facing Edge later. Austin Theory did an interview, and Chad Gable showed up. He is the one that's going to be facing Johnny Gargano. Dakota and Eo versus Zalia and Raquel. Mm. Golly. Mm -hmm. So first off, Raquel and Aaliyah come down to the ring, and you've never seen two more depressed people. And Raquel's got that gimmick where all she does is smile. She can barely smile. Aaliyah's... Ah, they get in the ring. Face. God, this was the ultimate boo-boo face. I knew immediately they were losing. They get in the ring, and Aaliyah kisses the belt goodbye, whole nine yards. They do the match, and, uh, man, God bless her, but Aaliyah is just, oh, she couldn't, she was just, she tries so hard, but everything is ridiculous. And it builds to the big spot at the end where, like, everybody's interfering, and they do this spot where she does a sliding drop kick to Bailey outside the ring, and then she sits on the bottom rope. She's sitting there watching, and then she, all of a sudden I think she realized she needed to be selling for the next spot, and so she just faints off the middle rope. I was crying. And then Dakota goes for a finish, and she screws up the finish. It's that uh, flipping backcracker, and somehow she screws it up, but then... She she does the uh the like the trick Williams. She jumps straight up in the air about ten feet and falls on her back. And even Corey's like, I don't know what happened there. And then they pinned him. And so the people who we figured were going to win the tournament, they're the champions. Two weeks later, they literally just put the belt on another team to surprise you. 
which, I mean, yeah, I was surprised because I thought they were incompetent, uh, you know, whoever booked that. And now they just put him back on him again. So we had a useless two-week run with the other two who are sad that they lost him, even though they probably were never going to get him in the first place. Maybe God. this can be Aaliyah's gold watch for making it nine years in WWE. That She's been there like nine years now, right? I think it's it's been years. a long time. It's been a eight long years. time. Send her back down to NXT. And you know what? Maybe if she'd like to stay in wrestling because she's pretty, she's got personality. Obviously, she likes wrestling, I think. Go do it somewhere else and get better and then come back, please. I don't think Mandy Rose will take that option. Aaliyah, maybe she should. Well, here's the deal, everybody. I don't dislike Aaliyah. No. What, what Aaliyah needs, she doesn't even need to be sent back, back to NXT. And you know why I say that? Because she was there for eight years, and this is what we got. What she okay. needs is to not be in the championship picture, and she needs to be on the road three or four days a week, calling, having someone call matches in the ring and teach her how, it's a crash course in learning how to work. Then she can get a push. Her and Aaliyah were not ready for this push. The matches were bad, and she needs to... Her and Raquel, and everybody else that called up that was unprepared for the main roster and how you work on the main roster, not practice your matches and then repeat them, but learn how to work. All of them need to be on the road working. Then you push them. Otherwise, hey, you need to learn how to work down there. If they're not going to learn how to work down there, they need a crash course when they get up. And that's and matches having, in front of a live crowd. Having a purpose will help that, too. Because look at the way Zia Lee and to a different weird type of extent that Lacey Evans exists on that roster. And it's like, what did you bring Aaliyah up for way back? And she's been lingering there forever before you decided to do this giant, small, you know, deal with Raquel there just to surprise everybody. So, you know, actually having a purpose and some defined ideas for some of these folks, you know, if they're going to be on TV, maybe a good idea, too. Jenny Gargano, Chad Gable, 14 minutes. And uh, I just got to briefly put over Johnny Gargano here because I have a lot of common with old Johnny Gargano. We're roughly the same size, fathers, and we both took a long time off. Therefore, I appreciate what a hell of a job this guy did. This guy took nine months off wrestling. This was his first match. It happened to be in front of a live crowd on national television. They had to go 13 minutes. And not only was it nine months off, it was nine months off with a newborn. That guy's the man. He pulled it off, did a great job here. They had a good match. He beat Chad Gable. He avoided Otis. But then at the end, he got beat up by Theory. To lead to an Austin Theory segment where Kevin Owens came out, and I'm not going to recap this promo because I can't do it justice, but this was the best. This was this was not as good as Moxley's promo on Dynamite last week, which was like an all-timer. But if that promo hadn't happened, everybody would be talking about this as like the promo of the last God only knows how long. He did this unbelievable promo, which basically was about, you know, guys like you are a dime a dozen. And guys like myself and Gargano were one in a million because, you know, guys like you get chance after chance. And guys like me and Gargano, we almost never get a chance. And he does this whole deal about how Theory needs to get in there and bust his ass and, and prove that he can be the guy to carry the company. And how does Austin Theory respond? He shows his big muscles. I thought, what a, what a troll. <laughs> and so uh, Kevin Owens slaps him. Austin Theory, they get into this huge brawl. Theory's bleeding from the nose. This is a great segment. And they're wrestling next week. Again, even though uh, Kevin Owens beat him clean in the middle of the ring last time. But hey. Bianca beats Sonya. 12 minutes. Ugh. Sonya Deville. Here's another one. She, If she's going to be a wrestler, then she needs to be on the road three or four days a week, wrestling matches, and learning how to call it in the ring and work. Bianca Belair is, uh, she's something special. And she came from developmental. But, man, they brought her up, and she just figured this whole game out. She was in there. She looked like she'd been wrestling for about 60 years. In there was somebody who had had three matches. And she's trying so hard to not do the, the face, but she is so frustrated. And, like, one thing after another is not working out right, and she's just irritated. And finally she beats her, and then she's like... Whew. Boom. 
And then uh, damage control hits the ring. Asuka and Alexa make the save. And uh, Bailey gets laid out by Bianca. Omos. One minute and 40 second squash of two prized Buddy Wayne pupils. It was a sad day. We had a Rollins promo. Bobby Lashley's there. Rollins challenges Lashley for his title. They're wrestling next week. I think we can all figure out what happens, but it should be a good match otherwise. We had the Miz segment. He's at his house. Maurice wants to go do something. He's like, are you sure we should leave with this creep from the creep farm creeping around? And she's like, we got all this security, everything. So they leave, and of course he gets in the house and starts drawing. You know what he was doing? What was he doing? Paisley went to, uh, she started uh, first grade. And I think the classroom next to her, they've got like a little hamster or something that the kids can like look at and yeah. learn how to do everything. And she explains the other day, the hamster snurked into their classroom. Snurked? Snurked. <laughs> And then she's explaining the the hamster snurked in. So then I was like, can you show me how he snurked? And so she starts going, she's like, she did the snurk. I'm like, thank God, a new word. But anyway, Dexter Loomis snurked in and then did some drawings. That's what happened in this segment. Who cares? Mid-card stupidity, whatever. Who cares? And then uh, Edge and Dominic Mysterio. 15 minutes. Dominic worked heel. Edge worked babyface. Edge held his hand through the whole thing. And it wasn't like a blow-away match or anything like that, but it was good. I mean, Edge knows what he's doing, and Dominic held his own. And, of course, there was uh, interference from everybody. And finally, Edge ties him in the ropes like he's Andre the Giant, and he's pounding on him. And finally, Ray can take no more. And Ray hits the ring, and he's begging Edge to stop, and Edge shoves him away twice. And then, of course, this allows... uh, Judgment Day to hit the ring for the DQ, and they destroy Edge, and Dominic destroys his leg with a chair. They put Edge's uh, leg on a chair, so his his leg is up, and it's elevated like this. And then Finn Balor's got a double foot stomp onto his leg. And somehow they did it. I don't think they broke the dude's leg or killed him, but bro, you asked me to do that? Not happening. And they uh, laid him out and killed him, and that was the end of the show, so... I know no one wants to hear it, but this show is so much better. It's just simple, basic storytelling. What happens one week plays into the next week, which plays into the next week. Yeah, every now and then there's something that you, like, what? But that happens on AEW. It happens everywhere. I mean, God bless DJ. I love him. But in the preview today, he goes, some, at some point, Brian's going to see the light. I'm not gonna. I watch it every week. (laughs) And I watched it from 2018 until the day Vince left. It's miles, multitudes better. And I don't know what I'm going to see that's going to make me think it's as bad as it was when Vince was in charge. Black and white. That was 30 seconds. And that was horrible. But it was 30 seconds. On an otherwise great... Smackdown. All I have is a few questions. Oh, good. My favorite. Is it duplex or suplex? Or is it both? A wrestling move where you <laughs> grab your opponent and throw him backwards through the air is a suplex. A housing complex with two homes built connected is a duplex. Yeah, it's never been duplex, Granny, but you've you've said this now for 15 okay, years, so we just I, yeah, let, it, yeah. let it go. Yeah. So I thought once and for all, I want to know which it is. So it's duplex and not suplex. Right? No, a it's, suplex it's is suplex a wrestling move. and not duplex. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> duplex is a housing development, Granny. Ulysses S. Grant battle we, scars. We, we definitely read these. Skip forward no, a few pages. No, no, okay, no. Okay, all right, all right, go ahead. We didn't do this one. Okay. Yeah, this person says we did. This person says I, we did it. I protest. There must be two of them then. <laughs> I protest. <laughs> he wrote the same one twice. Yeah. I like this one about Grant so much. I'm going to put it in the book twice. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't back this time. Okay, far. fine. Read another one. Yeah, Everyone's saying we read these last week, Granny. Big deal. <laughs> Who cares, but everybody? All the, but all the researchers today. Are you reading the book the wrong way? No. Okay. What do you think I am? <laughs> I don't know. You keep saying you're going back. 
<laughs> Why would we go back when reading a book? We're supposed to go forward. Maybe what happens, Granny, is you put the bookmark in, and then when you open it to that page, you start reading the ones we already read. Maybe the bookmark should go on the next page. No. Okay. <laughs> what do they say in court? I object. I object! Objection, Your Honor! Yeah, that's right. I didn't read that again. Overruled, Granny, you did! <laughs> All right, anything else, Granny? You're guilty. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> go to go to jail. You're guilty was the high spot of the week. Oh, you I'll... shut me off. No, oh, you're right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? There was some weird rumbling going on. Like uh -oh. she, she's unplugging her own cord there. I think you unplugged the cord. I can't hear you. you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I'll message you. I'll message you. I hear you now. Oh, now you do? Yeah, now I hear. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! All right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.